So graphing quadratics means we're graphing stuff with a power 2. Do you guys remember what this graph looks like? Show me with your hands what it looks like. Yeah, it's not the V, right? This was actually one of those basic graph shapes that we talked about. Do you remember that? This one looked like this. A nice U-shaped graph going from the origin upwards at a nice curving slope. Are you guys with me on that? What did this one look like? Ah, so this right here, that negative, flipped this or reflected that across the x-axis, yeah? Pretty much the same looking graph though, right? Well, here's the deal. Anytime we have a graph that has an x squared in it where the square is the largest power, so for instance, this right here. Anytime we see that square, that means you are going to be dealing with a parabola because you've got a quadratic function. This right here, when we have this equal to a function, that's called function notation. So this is a quadratic function. And in general, here's what we can do with that. We can say that anything that looks like this with an a x squared plus bx plus c, anything of this form where that x squared should stand out to you. Does that stand out to you? Because yeah. I have it in a different color. Of course it stands out to you. Uh, but anything with that square, that is a parabola. That we're going to be able to graph. So this right here is a quadratic function. Clearly quadratic because it's of that quadratic form, clearly a function because we have it in function notation, and the graph will be a parabola. Now let's see if you remember back to chapter 8 stuff. Firstly, ladies and gentlemen, uh, look up at the board with me. Is this a quadratic function? Yes. Does it have an x squared? Yes. Does it have a function? Yes. That's a quadratic function. It doesn't matter if it has all this other junk, okay? As long as it has an x squared, that automatically qualifies it as a quadratic function. You, you with me? Hey, hey, hey. Does this still make a parabola? Is this parabola going to be exactly like this one? What's the, difference, what's the difference between this and this? That plus, that plus 4 did something. Now that plus 4, you need to tell me whether it moved it up, down, left, or right. I said some people, some people say left, some people say up. One of you is right. Oh, right up, because it's not inside the... It's not in parentheses, is it? This says you're going to do a whole bunch of stuff to this, and then at the very end you're going to add 4, which says... Move it up four. Do you remember that? Yeah. This right here is a shift up four. In fact, any time, any time, let's go back to chapter eight. This is our, our basic graph shapes, right? Any time you have a plus or minus at the end of your function that is shifting your graph, graph up or down, right? Plus means up, minus means down. So we're going to talk again about vertical shifts. You knew that shift was going to come back at you, right? <laughs> Thanks for the courtesy laugh. I think I even misspelled vertical. <laughs> <laughs> I was too, too involved in my own joke. Vertical shifts. So if we have x squared, this is what's going to be kind of nice about this section. It is exactly the same as the chapter 8 stuff. All that shifting. So if you remember the shifting, you are ahead of the game. Uh, except we don't have any other shapes to remember except the parabola. So what are we going to be graphing every single time? Parabola. If you have anything besides a parabola, are you doing it right? No. Mm, no. No straight lines, no Vs, no weird curves, just parabolas. If we have x squared plus k, so some parabola plus k, what that's doing is that shifting it, what was, it, what was this again, up or down? Uh, this is up k units. This is a shift up. K units. 
which means that if we have x squared minus k, well, that's just going to be a shift down k units. So we're taking this graph right here, our basic graph shape from chapter 8, the x squared, that's a parabola starting the origin, and we're just shifting it up or down. Let's try a couple examples. We'll move back to this one. So f of x equals x squared plus 4. Now, you can choose to draw your original graph shape or not. I really don't care. If you want to, then your original graph shape is always going to be this one, folks. It's always just going to be your, your x squared basic parabola. And then we're going to draw our shifted graph after that. So we say x squared, that's this. That's x squared. If we want to shift this, this says plus 4. That means on the, horizon, on, sorry, on the vertical, we're going to shift up 4 units. That says we move up 1, 2, 3, 4 spots. We'll redraw the exact same graph. And we'll label it, though. You've got to label it if you're going to draw two of them. Do you have to draw two of them? No, I don't care anymore but you need to know what your original one looks like. The original graph looks like this parabola, this basic graph shape that's on the board. We've shifted it up four units. That is the graph that we just drew. That function, x squared plus four, raise your hand, feel okay with so far. Is this coming back to you? I hope so. This is your second shot at it, right? So if you didn't really master this concept in chapter eight, this is it again. I mean, now we should just hammer it. <clears throat> Let's try one on your own just to make sure that you can do it. Just graph that for me. g of x equals x squared minus 2. Again, what's nice about this chapter is we're always starting, I'm oh, sorry, this section, we're always starting with our basic x squared, and it's going to be shifting that around. That's all we're dealing with in this whole section. Uh, this shift, is this up, down, left, or right? What do you think? Down. Down how many? Two. So we go down two. That means we're, we're moving pretty much our vertex. This lowest point or highest point in the case we had over here is called your vertex. We're just really shifting that and redrawing our graph. Yeah, that's about right. And we'll label that so that we know what graph we have. I uh, made mine too skinny, but that's okay. It lost some weight. <laughs> now, how about this one? <clears throat> Was that still a shift down? Was that still a shift up? So, is this a vertical shift at all? No. Vertical shifts come at the very end of our problem, end of our function. This right here, this plus k, this minus k, that's after everything's been done, right? It says you do all this stuff, and then you're moving it up or down a little bit. That's what's happening here. This one that's within the function says I'm either speeding up or I'm slowing down my function. That's moving it either left or right like a timeline. Remember talking about the timeline idea? This right here, this slows down our function. So whatever number we plug in, we take away one from it. So instead of starting here, it's starting later. Later is far, like a, if you want to think of it a timeline. It's starting numerically later. So if I plugged in 2, it'd be like I was plugging in 1 for that value. So it's, it's actually slowing it down. It's saying if you started here, now you're starting a little bit, a little bit later. So is this going to be a left or a right shift? Right. right. That's a right shift. So we know that we also have not only vertical shifts, but horizontal shifts. And we can have x minus k, or we can have x plus k. And they do two different things. You know what, let me change that k to an h, that way we don't get confused with the vertical shift. Do that for me, please. Uh, make sure you have this as an h. That way when we talk about k's, we mean vertical. When we talk about h's, we mean horizontal. h will horizontal, that seems to make some sense. So while plus or minus k at the very end of our function shifted up or down, 
this plus or minus h inside of our function shifts it left or right. It either speeds up or slows down our graph. We talked about that in chapter 8. So this minus h, that's actually sh slowing something down. It says instead of starting here, we're going to start a little bit later. So that's going to shift it to the right. Here, this adds to our x before we plug it in. That says, well, instead of starting here, you're going to start sooner. That moves it to the left. So it was kind of opposite of what your brain wants to say, right? Your brain wants to say this is left, this is right. That's not, something, that's not what's happening because we're in parentheses. It's slowing it down, left. Speeding it up. I'm sorry, uh, slowing it down, right. Speeding it up, left. Like a timeline, we're speeding up or slowing down. So this right here, this was a shift to the right. Make sure your notes are correct on that. Shift to the right, h units. And this was a shift left, h units. Hey, by the way, can you still see that that will in fact make a parabola? Can you see it? Do you see the square? If you were, don't do this, but if you were to distribute that, you're going to get x squared out of that thing, right? So x squared minus 2x plus 1. That's a parabola. That's a quadratic function. We just have them written a little bit differently because someone's already done the work and factored that for you. That's kind of nice, right? So we're just going to be shifting things around. That's what, what this uh, section does for us. So let's go back to this problem. We'll go ahead and graph that. So again, what we're doing is we're starting with our original graph. That's just a nice x squared graph. And then we're going to be shifting it. In this case, this said we're subtracting 1 from our number before we square it. That's going to slow down our graph. So instead of starting right here on the y-axis, we're starting a little bit later. So we're shifting it to the right one spot. Again, we're shifting the vertex over. We'll redraw it. That's our graph. How many people feel okay with this one so far? Yes, no? Right. Well, let's try one on your own and we'll keep going. Go ahead and grab that one. Do the g of x equals x squared plus 2. So we start with our original x squared. You can choose to draw that or not. Honestly, it really doesn't matter. We just need to have the shifting correct and label your graphs. So on this one, is this moving left, right, up, down? Which one? Left, left. left. how many spots? Two. Good. So really, we're, we're just redrawing a parabola. We're going to move it to the left two spots. And when I say it, I mean the vertex. We'll redraw that. We'll be sure to label it. In this case, it's g of x. How many people got that exact, exact graph on their paper? OK. Are you starting to see how similar this is to the chapter 8 stuff? Very, very, very similar as far as that, that shifting goes. By the way, did the letter matter? That yeah. really just tells you what the name of the graph is. Every graph has a different name, typically. And we have those different names because if we have to graph them on the same graph, we want to be able to identify between them. That's all that letter is doing. Can the shift